Hey guys, it's Gina. I hope you're all doing well. I wanted to do a quick video on time management as well as prioritization. So working in critical care, ICU, you obviously have to assess the situation, assess the patient, and review your orders and find out what you really need to get to uh, because, you know, nursing is a 24-7 job. It may not be fall under your shift. You may not get to it during your shift, but you want to prioritize and do what you believe um, has top priority during your shift. So obviously this is for uh, following the care plan of the patient, getting them stable. And as you work and you see different patients and diagnosis and you're able to learn how to assess and anticipate, you can determine what kind of jumps up to the top of your priority list. So I hope that this video helps you figure that out. And like I've mentioned before, just having your hands on working in this setting, you will start to learn and it will become easier. But it is very difficult for a new nurse to prioritize. They will get uh, very stuck on little things, task-oriented things versus kind of thinking bigger picture. So I hope this video helps you out. All right, so first thing is first, when you get to the unit, go ahead and obviously listen to the report and find out who is sicker. So that's normally what I do, find out who I need to see first, who do I need to stabilize, what medications I need to give, and that will prioritize who you will see and then obviously address that. So there are days where you get on, someone is decompensating pretty quickly. So obviously you will greet the other patient or have someone else um, let them know that you're, you're there, but obviously you're going to go to that other patient who's not doing so well and that's who you will prioritize. So obviously get a good report, assess the patients, make sure that the report matches the patient's current um, condition. If it doesn't, that's when you start assessing and you start acting, okay? So follow your ABC is obviously airway, uh, breathing, all of that. And that will tell you what you need to do. And again, your skills, your assessment skills will improve as you work and take care of higher acuity patients. So I do challenge you to always push and, and try and accept a challenging patient so you can learn. Um, other things that I prioritize, obviously I want to make the person stable. So anything that I can do to help that person become stable, then that's what I'm going to prioritize. So for instance, let's say a patient's uh, pretty much going to respiratory distress. They're not maintaining the oxygenation. We're at the point where we need to intubate. Okay, so at that point, obviously, you follow your protocol, um, talk to the family if you see fit, if you have that time. So let's say I don't have that time and it's an emergent intubation, there are full code, we're going to act in the best interest of the patient. I want to secure a safe um, airway so we can maintain their airway, provide them the oxygen that they need so they we don't have to code them. So the priority at that point would be obviously working with the physicians, the respiratory therapists, and getting the patient intubated so we can manage their ventilation um, and prevent a bad outcome of like, let's say, coding the patient. And then we can always go back and you know, talk to the family and we found ourselves in this position. This was the best way forward. We obviously, if we weren't to act quickly, we could have had a different um, outcome. At that point, let's say it takes a little bit of time to stabilize a patient, especially after um, like intubation or maybe they're hemodynamically unstable. So at that point, let's say I come in, someone's work of breathing is increased. Okay, we're at the point where they're no longer maintaining their oxygenation, even on like the BiPAP, 100% of oxygen, all of this. Then we work quickly. Okay, uh, where's my physician, the RT, I believe we need to intubate. They come and assess, they agree. Then that's when you obviously go into, um, like your gentleman will definitely move you to make sure that you're getting everything situated and then obviously your peers and your charge nurse or whoever else is available to come help you. Um, that's where teamwork 
it just and you will experience it and I really love to be in that environment because we all know what we need to do to stabilize this patient and we are all prioritizing this patient this moment this um, intervention this task so at that point let's say they're intubated uh, I obviously am prioritizing I'm in the moment I am trying to stabilize this patient so anything else that may be coming up let's say someone is calling for the other patient um, or lab is calling to call um, a la a result or you know at that point that has to wait you're prioritizing who you are working with at that moment and then obviously if it's a uh, top priority thing for the other patient then that's where you start requesting assistance from your other nurses your charge nurse so let's say my patient's intubated at this point now I'm having uh, problems with their blood pressure so they don't have a central line you need to start them on a presser so you can help them circulate their blood to provide um, their vital organs you know blood nutrients oxygen all of that so at that point you're prioritizing okay now I have a new issue that I need to help restabilize this patient. Now we're seeing a trend that's going down on their blood pressure. I believe they need a central line. We might need to start, you know, doing a bolus or start them on a presser. So go ahead and communicate that with the physician. And I'm sure they are aware, but again, you are the nurse. You are advocating for the patient and you're spending so much time with these patients. So you'll you'll be able to pick up uh, little cues here and there. So now you have to go get, let's say, the central line cart, the ultrasound, all of that. And now that becomes your next step. So in the meantime, let's say... And I remember getting flustered when I would get, let's say, a patient from a rapid response, you know. I would do my assessment, obviously, and I wouldn't chart the assessment during that time. So in the middle of all of this, in the back of my mind, I'm like, oh my gosh, I have not charted that assessment. Like, I'm going to be here forever, or I'm going to get in trouble for not charting that assessment, you know, within the hour that they got into the unit. That has to take a seat. I hope you understand that and I know it's very difficult to do when you start off because at least for me I felt like I had to uh, follow the list of things to do in a very timely manner and when that didn't happen when things occurred that took me away from that basic routine I felt behind I felt like I was doing something wrong the greatest piece of advice that I got from a uh, director because I remember expressing that that was a concern of mine is I don't want to put my license in line I don't want to get in trouble for not charting something at the right time and all that and he was like as long as you're taking care of the patient I would have a supporting argument as to why I couldn't give that antibiotic next door exactly at 1502 see what I'm saying and obviously you want to learn how to manage um, and that will come with time and experience but that would really get to me uh, mentally and I would feel like a failure and I didn't like that feeling because it's very hard to not feel that and go back and be all energetic and you know believe that you're capable so once I started to really grasp that I'm like I will let you know I will be more than happy to talk to you face to face and let you know why I was late on X, Y, and Z or why I could not get to X, Y, and Z because I was doing, you know, I was intubating a patient. We were putting a central line. We had to start pressers. We had to go for a stat uh, um, CT. All of that, you know, so that obviously outweighs, that takes priority to um, doing something else, okay, giving a colace at 1600. So, that will come with time so I guess the greatest tip I can give y'all is when you start reviewing all your orders obviously what can you get to what do you need to get to sooner rather than later what must you get done before the shift what will help move the patient's uh, recovery healing forward okay so I had a situation where I didn't know what we were waiting for how could I move the care that we're providing to this patient who's in need forward. It wasn't clear in the report. So 
this is obviously the beginning of my shift and I don't know what to work off of because I was not able to get that from the verbal report from the night nurse. They were unsure as well. And that could sometimes happen. So this is where, as a nurse, okay, yeah, I'm gonna go in and assess the patient so I have the most accurate, important information to provide to the provider so we know what we're working with and it'll give them the information to um, provide new orders, okay? So at that point, I'm like, okay, well, we need to do this um but i'm not sure where we are in the process so that's when i start okay after my assessments and getting the person um, situated and all of that i need to start calling finding out what are we doing next what are we waiting for because the ball is just stuck at that point i don't know who to call what to do and you have to do a little bit of digging and um, looking at notes and calling and finding the right people to talk to and then eventually you you talk to that person you get the clarification you get that new order and then you move the the plan forward and you're able to provide that update to the uh, patient and the family members so that's prioritizing action so yeah I could have waited to later but that could if I wasn't on it we could have spent a whole 12 hours I'm like oh yeah I guess I should call and find out what they're planning on doing here. And that's a whole day where the patient's not getting the care and the treatment or the intervention that they are there for, okay? And I think that with the time management, I believe I have a video that lists pretty much my daily ICU routine. Go ahead and take a look at that just so you can kind of see the skeleton of my day. But then you have to be available and flexible because things will change. Someone can easily deteriorate and decompensate and your focus just goes there. Good common habits, obviously stat orders, anything that will help stabilize the patient. You're obviously assessing their vital signs. You're looking for any, um, obviously any new problems that were not there before. So then that should be added to the top of the list to make sure that you're talking to the physician so that they are aware of that change. Certain time sensitive medications, you want to be aware of what those are because sometimes it is very crucial uh, for that patient to get that dose at the exact time every single day. So that again will come with you working with the patients, that diagnosis, the medications, the pharmacists, the orders. I think that's pretty much it. So my overall summary is obviously think of what you can do to stabilize the patient. Think of what you can do to move the care forward. Um, and then obviously be flexible when things start to go kind of south. Figure out what you need to do to save that patient. So your priorities should be there. Time management, again, um, try and set up a routine where you can kind of make that into like a habit and then go from there. The charting can wait. I think that was the biggest thing too is that I felt like I had to chart real time at all times and that's not how it works, especially in critical care. Sometimes you will work so hard to save and stabilize someone that all that computer stuff can wait until after they're stabilized and then you can sit and you can catch up on it, okay? So you are prioritizing your patient, take care of your patient, and everything else will fall into place. Your time management will improve, you know, let's say taking blood was taking 30 minutes and now you're much better at doing uh, labs and it takes you five minutes and you're able to get to charting and so all of that will come as your skills improve as your confidence improves and then if you ever find yourself in a situation where another nurse let's say a more experienced nurse or even just your peer like oh leave that alone for instance like if you're um, if you're if the patient's blood pressure is not responding well to a bolus and they're in need of a presser don't start thinking oh, okay did I see a order for nutrition or are we thinking of feeding that's not the priority so you will learn what things to anticipate and then what things will um, can hold off and then if you're ever kind of in the gray area go ahead and ask the physician for clarification 
Um, so for instance, I had a patient where we were intubating and when you intubate, sometimes it's very nice to put in like an OG or NG uh, tube just to make sure that you're decompressing the stomach um, if it's needed or administering medication or even nutrition. So normally you kind of do the two uh, together, just again, depends on the patient and after intubating and all of that before the x-ray um, technician would come up and take the x-ray to confirm placement of the ET tube, I was thinking, hey, uh, can we put a NG or OG in there? And at that point, with knowing the patient's history and their INR, they decided to hold off. So I was like, okay, just wanted to make sure. And so obviously made sure that they were aware, okay, so any PO medications, can y'all change it? Or because I don't want to find myself in a position where they need to give medications and not uh, have a way to administer it. So that could be an example of maybe I wasn't prioritizing correctly. And you will find that. So someone else will be like, oh, that's not the priority at the moment. We're obviously, um, we just intubated her. We want to make sure she's stable and all that. And then we can go um, revisit that. So the patient could be nicely sedated and then let's say the next morning, okay, we need to start feeding the patient. Go ahead and put an NG or OG tube in. See what I'm saying? So you will learn as you go through different situations and scenarios. And again, utilize your charge nurses, your buddies, even the physicians for clarification. And be open for constructive criticism, especially if you find yourself in a hectic uh, situation and maybe what's occurring is slightly higher to your ability or because I can easily see and remember, you know, other nurses, veteran nurses that will come in and kind of, I don't want to say take over, but they obviously are getting on things and they may say, well, why are you doing that right now? Like that can wait. Be okay and learn from that. That has happened to me many times. Um, so I don't want you to feel frustrated. It is normal to feel like, uh, dang, <laughs> I missed that. Or yeah, so I remember feeling at them like, and just to learn from that, okay? And then one day you will find yourself in the same situation going in and you will help correct a nurse who's doing that same mistake or a task that um, is not really relevant at that moment. So you learn and then you teach and you learn and then you teach. So yeah, I hope you got something out of this video. If you have any questions, leave in the comment section below. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe and share the videos. Bye.